Ooh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. I'm tired and it's raining. And hopefully this will be the last time I have to be sitting out here in the rain. Because as I've been building the set out here, this one of the problems I had during the season was, um, you know, we were out here having football parties so that way we could keep socially distanced and have the air circulating. So I put a, a corrugated pans up underneath the deck there so it's dry underneath there. But, you know, we had Rashid and his wife and, you know, other people that were sitting out here. We had a couple of games, you know, where Sunday it was raining. And so I put a tarp out here, which kind of worked, but it still kind of leaked and it would get, you know, bellies where there'd be a lot of water. It, it was just ghetto. I mean, it, look, I, I'll admit it. It was straight ghetto, straight up ghetto, just like the camera is crooked right now. So let me fix that as well. You know, this damn broke ass media is hell. But anyway, I ordered, it's a retractable crank out canopy. So that way it'll be able to come out and it'll be able to cover up. It's 16 by 10. So it's not going to cover up the whole area, but I'll put it kind of in the center and that will cut down on the, you know, sun coming in when I'm filming at the desk here. And if I build it out the way I'm thinking, it'll keep the, um, uh, rain, you know, I mean, keep the, yeah, they'll be able to keep the rain from getting back in there and I'll be able to sit out here. So it'll start from right here. And it'll go 16 feet that way. So, it, but I've got to do some work because I got to build out to where the posts are on the outside of it, so it's flush. And then I have to carry the flooring and put flashing up on there, so that way it'll run off of the deck onto it and run out. But anyway, this will be the last time I have to sit out here because then I can just kind of go ahead and crank it out, and I won't be sitting here in the rain like I am now. But it's okay because this rain can just kind of wash over me and renew me. Today started off as a really, really hard day for me. And I, I know, Cal, you know, football fans, you get tired of, of me going on, but this is my, my diary, so to speak. This is me at the end of the day reflecting on if I did everything I could to try and be a better person and to do better and to let people know how I feel. Today started off rough because I heard from my friend Frankie's wife this morning and she let me know out of the blue that he passed yesterday. Frankie I've known for about 25 years. Frankie I think is only about two years older than me. Has a son who went to Georgetown and played basketball for Georgetown and uh, played a little bit in the NBA and played a lot over in China and things. And him passing shocked the hell out of me. This is where you have to understand that um, nothing's promised to you. And you got to make the most of every day, which is why it's important for me to come out here and reflect. So, you know, cowboy fans and others are joking that, yeah, the cowboy signed the worst safety that came in. J. Ron Curse. Understand that they're not looking at him to be the starting safety. He is a depth signing. He is a special teams guy. He is a in case shit happens guy to play safety. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because, you know, everybody thinks that you can just hire and sign every Pro Bowl that's out there. You can't do that. It's not possible. Now we hear that the Dallas Cowboys are in talks with DeAndre K. Nee. K. K. Nee. K. Z. K. Z. K. Z. But he's still going to go visit the Lions tomorrow. Between him and Hooker, what this was about was doing a wellness check. Let's see how your body is healing from the torn Achilles tendon. Because as a cornerback, as a safety, you got to go backwards and forward. You got to be pushing off on that thing. And we got to be sure that that thing's going to be able to hold up before we sign you and plan on you being the guy. This is doing due diligence. And I'm okay with that. But I have a feeling that one of the two guys will be ultimately signed. And 
to me, if they're healthy, we're a better defense. Now, I've had discussions with my man DDMVV. We have so many people that are Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts. Everybody wants Kyle Pitts. I'm sorry. The thing that scares me is this. Sometimes when guys are super hyped, it's kind of like when my spider sense goes off. I remember, God, what is his name? Damn, it's back in the 80s. Oh, man, offensive lineman. He was drafted by the Green Bay Packers. I can't remember his name now, but this guy was like on the cover of Sports Illustrated, you know, working out on muscle beats. This guy was huge, especially at that time. They were talking about how this guy was the can't miss player, that this guy was going to revolutionize offensive linemen. And he ended up being a bust. Couldn't play. They were so wrong on this guy. It wasn't even close. Now, he did kind of have a journeyman career where he played okay, but nothing like the hype. I remember like Todd Marinovich, who, you know, he was bred to be a quarterback by his dad. And the Raiders drafted him quarterback, and he was a bust. Too many times we have this big hype where everybody gets on the hype train. Oh, this is going to be the guy. This is going to be the guy and everything else. And then they don't bust a great. You'll remember how everybody talked about Giovanni and Clowney. Oh, my God. Did you see how fast this guy is? Oh, my God. He's freaking insane. What do you run, like a 4 or 5, 4 or 6? Oh, my God. Put him in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah. Yeah. You remember when we got the best defensive player in the draft? Mm. Morris Claiborne. Super hyped. So when I hear Kyle Pitts, those things, and I'm not saying that Kyle Pitts isn't going to be that everything in a ham sandwich, but I just have this fear that it's just a little too much juice there. Now, let me ask you this. Hypothetically, hypothetically, we've got some role players on our team. Some role players, okay, on the defense. I'll say some players that are better than what we had before. I'm not saying that we're great by any stretch of the imagination, but we've got some guys that can probably do some stuff. I'm looking forward to Randy Gregory finally having an opportunity that knowing that he's the guy and not having to worry about being suspended for weed. I want to see... Gallimore with an offseason to put some more meat on him. I want to see Tristan Hill coming back. I'd like to see the Cowboys add another big man, a really big man. But we have the draft. So let's say we get either Hooker or DeAndre KZ. And add him to the safety we have. Not, not Xavier Woods now, bunch. I think that the safety position is improved. Now, we have Keanu O'Neal playing on the weak side. Hopefully, Jalen Smith isn't lost in this defense since it's not that much different than what he was comfortable with. Let's say that Van Der Esch in a contract year can stay healthy. I'd say that that's a better situation. Diggs, now his sophomore year, could be pretty good. And let's say in the draft, we get... Either Sertan or J.C. Horn. I'm okay with either of those guys rather than Kyle Pitts. I'm going to put it out there. I am on board with saying, screw Kyle Pitts. If J.C., excuse me, yeah, if J.C. Horn or Patrick Sertan is there, I'll take either one of those guys on my defense over Kyle Pitts. 
I understand Kyle Pitts may be a generational tight end. But with what I have on my offense right now, I'm okay. But what I need is, I need some damn people that can cover. I need my defense to be able to stop some people and get me some takeaways. And if you can get DeAndre, KZ, and he's anything like 2018, 2019, and put him back there as a ball hawk. And we add Patrick Sertan. I'm okay with that. I look at that and say the defense is already better than where it was last year. Because I look at the people that we brought in as younger guys that aren't highly paid, but would like to be. And knowing that, yeah, they're going to be motivated so they can get that contract knowing that come next year is where the big money will happen. For Keanu O'Neill, hey, look, if I can have me a great season for the Cowboys this year, it's on easy street the next year because the NFL will have new money, and I'll make a name for myself. And for the Cowboys, Keanu O'Neill's um, – Or, you know, one-year deal, it's a win-win. Either he plays like ass and you let him go because you only wasted one year, or he plays lights out and you got a player and you sign him, or he plays lights out and he signs a big contract elsewhere and you get a pet story pick. I'm okay with that. But if this draft holds to, to, to what it should be, four or five quarterbacks might be the first Nine picks in there. In there, Patrick Sewell will probably be gone. Kyle Pitts will probably be gone. Okay. That's seven of the picks. JC or Patrick Sutan should be there. And we should grab one of them. All right, y'all. Actually, I was going to say I'm going to go to bed, but I need to go glue up another cutting board before I go to sleep. I need a 13 by 16 that was just ordered. I don't have any more of those made up. And um, I'm trying to get everything done before Sunday because Sunday I, I have to go someplace. And I'll be out for a few days. And I want to take care of you guys before I go. Hope you guys have a great night and I appreciate you. It's all downhill from here because hump days in the books. Peace.